you know what do? They'll kidnap you until you give them your name. If you get caught on a train and you haven't got a ticket, they'll kidnap you until you give them the name. Because they want what's a thing called joiner, which is your name and address and your birth date. Because they want your bond. They want the details of your bond. They want that for a very good reason. And I'll get back to that in a minute. So he goes, he gets arrested, he goes in there, and eventually they, the sergeant's there, and oh, we've got this guy, he won't give us our name, I'll put him in the cell, then he's drunk, da 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 da. They let him go the next day. You yeah, the point is, is that they let him go. The reason, here's another one, that there's, there's this really mind blowing the way the whole stitch up goes, is that bond that was created at your birth, there's a thing, it's a fancy French word, it says Cesta KV, which means for the benefit of another. It was something that was created after the great fire of London, when they were trying to find out all the dead people, all those people that were missing, and all the other stuff. And, but on one side, but on the other side, they were trying to raise a new form of currency of credit, because remember these guys, these Templars have done it before, how do you think they finance those big, nice Gothic cathedrals and all the rest of that with their money lending, international banking scams and all that, but that's another history. But in 1666, after the fire of London, they created a Cesta KV Trust. The way they work it in terms of uh, the occult side, they say, okay, you're born, you're created by the divine, and therefore you inherit the earth. And you inherit in abundance. If you can go on the internet, you can check it out. If we live in the, the whole planet, 7 billion people live in the same population density as Paris, we take up less than half the size of Texas. All the rest of that space on the planet would be left there. That, that would be us. It'd probably be crowded and horrible and all the rest of it, but that's about it. So you inherit, if you want to work it out, I, I took the time and trouble to do it actually. If you look at it, you can do it online. Work out all the nice, arable, usable land, not the desert this guy was trying to, uh, to claim, but that's there now, divided by 7 billion people. Each one individual gets four. Areas the size of Twickenham rugby field, all right, and that's good. That's that's your birthright. Exactly, that's four Twickenham-sized bits of dirt. That's your birthright. But of course, your mother registered you, so they take that asset, don't they, off you? That's your birthright. It's taken from you straight away. But what they do is they monetize it because they monetize you and that asset. And that asset is supposedly from some researchers. I can't confirm it, but I know one. There's one lady that came here. She actually managed to find it around about two million pounds. So you've got an account that you don't know anything about that's worth about two million pounds in today's money. And what happens is this. When your uh, electricity bill comes through, this is like this little check thing at the bottom, isn't it? It looks like an old-fashioned check, and it's got like three banks on it. Santander, National Westminster, or something like that. And, and it says take it to a post office, fill it out, and stamp it, and all the other stuff. Okay, here, here's a little secret for those who aren't headwind. Every debt that you incur with a corporation is zeroed, or settled, because remember, it's not real money, it's, it's credit, in 90 days. So any registered company that have got joined your name and address and your birthday, can apply to the Crown and settle that debt. And what they do, and this is what's financing the corporate takeover of the planet, is they get their bills paid for twice. They get it paid by the corporation, because corporations can print their own promissory notes or bills of exchange and negotiable instruments. But what they do is they get it from the second way of funding, which is the money they put into circulation, which is your sweat equity. So they get paid from your bond account, which you don't know anything about, and they get paid by the money that you've had to go and work for and you pay that bill off, so they get paid twice. And corporations, that's what they do. And the guys that are high up, um, in the financial aspects of those corporations, know this stuff. I've dealt with them. You know, and you can, you can play this stuff. You can say to the council tax or whatever it is, oh, that's already been paid. It's 90 days. It's outstanding. It's been done. Tell, prove to me that it wasn't. It hasn't been paid for. And they can't. Because what they're doing is they're technically committing a fraud. Because they're asking, it's a fraudulent, isn't it? If I say, this costs that much, and you've already paid for it, and I try to get you to pay for it twice, it's fraud, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Double bubble, isn't it? It's called double bit dipping. <laughs> okay? But this is all part of the system that we're living in. You've got all this stuff, all those rights, all that economic power. The corporations are playing a game when I was a kid, it used to be called Piggy in the Middle. Corporations one side, and they've got this account, and they throw it over you, because you're down here like that, and the other one catches it, thanks for the money, I've got that, and you don't even know you've got that account. The occult aspect of it, again, is like, when you have to go to, to court, you're actually being invited to a, a dark ritual, which is why you're summoned. You're summoned to appear. Like you're some sort of ghost or a spirit, because that's what they think you are, because that trust that's worth money, they don't tell you about it, but you could have reclaimed that within seven years. But after seven years, the law of salvage comes along and the government say, OK, well, that's, that's a wreck. Well, we'll have that. So they salvage that and they use that. So you can't get it anymore. Even though they know in the real world you're alive and flesh and blood, you know, because you've got your national insurance thing, uh, you know, you go to the NHS, they know you're physical, you know, they'll take blood from you, all the other stuff. This occult system doesn't see it. They're off their dial, these guys. Unless we begin to see that this is what's really going on, instead of just going, oh, no, this is just sounds, this is just preposterous, absolutely preposterous. How can this possibly be the case? Unless we kind of just, you know, open up our horizons a little bit, honestly, open-mindedness and willingness, and go, okay, well, I'll entertain this for a while. I'll do a bit of research and see if there's anything oh, this crazy guy was talking about. Do it yourself. Check it all out. You're, you're summoned to appear in a court. Why are you summoned? Because as far as they're concerned, you didn't collect that account within seven years. So there, you're four, you're presumed dead. So if there's any liability, then they have to summon you, because that's what you are. You're a spirit. I know it sounds absolutely barking, raving mad, doesn't it? But this is the way they do it. Because the way these guys work 
is, and they've had many, many years to do this, they know if they can control your mind, then your body will follow. And they will, con they will use all manner of things. Just around the corner from here, there's a thing called the Tavistock Institute. For those of you that do a bit of research or do a bit of shrinky stuff like me, no, it really does some good work, but it's got some extremely dark aspects to it. And its whole founding is extremely dark. It's about mind manipulation. And really, when you start realizing how you're controlled in this system, they don't mind what religion you believe in. There is only one religion, and that's the religion of money. And they want you to believe in that more than anything else. That's what they're selling you, is that religion. You can go one day a week, if you like, to your church or whatever it is you go to, and feel good about yourself. That's great, because as long as you go back the extra five days and you work, because that's your worth, that's your offering. You are handing over your will and your life to the God money. And for those people who don't know it yet, the word mortgage comes from Lamont, Death Grip. Death Grip, that's where it comes you from. You buy one house, you have six. By the time you pay the last installment, your life is finished. Things you brought up the mortgage thing. Say you decide you're going to buy a house in London, so you need a million quid at least, right, oh. to buy a house in London. Oh. So you go in there, you go to the bank, and the bankers are the high priests of Baal. Exactly. All right, got money. They're the high priests. And they sit you down and go, oh, you want to borrow some money? Well, the first thing they want to know is they're putting a scam on you, is what's your sweat equity worth? What do you earn as a slave? How much are you worth as a slave? So the first thing they do is they'll say, okay, we'll get you to sign this. And what they do is they get you to sign, remember, sign of nature, a promissory note. And they've got your name and they've got your address. So they take that promissory note and they put it in an account. And they, out of thin air, create a million pounds. They always do it double dealing, double bookkeeping. They've got your bond that you don't know you have and they've got all your details. So if, if you die, that's okay. That exists. It's got currency. And then they'll talk you into an insurance policy. It's called a life insurance policy. That's the one they'll like as well. So you go into the bank. And you, your signature has created a million pounds, okay? Right? So, in effect, you've actually already bought the house. Right? But then what they do is they talk you into paying another million pounds, which they call the principal. They deceive you by saying that we're lending you this million pounds. So you've gone into the bank as a sovereign, created, living, being, soul, flesh, blood, inheritance and everything. Your signature has created one million pounds. They've got an undertaking from you now to work for the rest of your life to create another million pounds. And they're going to charge you interest on that as well. So you've created two million pounds plus whatever interest they want to put on the top of that. What have the bank risked? A big fat zero. But then that's the religion, isn't it? Because they get you to go out there. You are handing over something of value on a daily basis. When you clock in or you go to work, you're giving the most valuable thing that you've got, your time, your life. That's you paying homage to their God. Okay, you can go one day a week somewhere else and believe that you're doing something else. But physically, in your reality, you've got no choice. You're in bondage. You want to talk about freedom? Tell me how long you're going to last without money in your pocket. And then you see how much freedom you've got. That's the reality. That belief is so powerful. I mean, if you were to get £100,000 in news notes and just throw it on any street, Trafalgar Square or somewhere like that, you'd see complete insanity. You'd see total violence breaking out. I've worked in rehabs. I specialised in the treatment of addictive clients, you know, drug addicts, alcoholics. And their parents would come in and they would say to me, well, if he's done detox, he's done his cold turkey, surely those cravings are gone. You know, he's not physically addicted to it anymore. I said, no, 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 no. And they're like this. I said, no, 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 it's a psychological addiction is the most important thing. I said, they're addicted to a mood and mind-altering substance. And they said, well, well, we don't understand, you know, if it's, as long as he doesn't drink anymore, as long as he doesn't do any more heroin, he'll be fine. You know, that's what changes his mood and his mind. And I said, okay, here's a table. I'll put a wee baggie, a snack, some brown on the corner there, a bit of coke, a bit of marijuana, a bit of nice grass, a nice sticky bud, say, something like that would be nice. Some bottles of Moët Chandon, eh? Some Nuit Saint-Georges, uh, a few bottles of Rioja. All right, if you want, a couple of tins of tenants. Or special brief. What would you like? And they go, oh, no, we're not really interested in anything else. I'll tell you what, I'll put five grand in news 20s. Oh, that would be nice. How would that make you feel? And they go, oh, yeah, that makes you feel great. I say, okay, all these other substances, if you imbibe them, there's a chemical reason that's going to change your mood and your mind. But you're telling me this printed paper is going to make you happy? Is going to change your mood and your mind? Watch them on the game shows when they win something. Watch them with the gambling. Watch them. That's a mood and mind altering substance that's more powerful than all the other ones on the table. Because all the other ones on the table, you can get rid of that addiction. You don't have to be addicted to that. There's ways around that addiction. But that other addiction, that psychological addiction, you try getting along without that one. Even if you want to. Even if you try not to. It's probably the hardest addiction that there is. Exactly, exactly. So that's what you're kind of dealing with in terms of the mind programming and the addiction. Now it sounds really dark and gloomy and all the rest of it, but there is a solution. And really the solution is it's always been there. And this is probably why it's going to sound a bit cheesy and corny. But the solution is a thing called a spiritual program. It's to reclaim your soul, your sense of value, your sense of worth. You know, and there are plenty of spiritual programs out there that don't demand you give them shed loads of money and all the other stuff. In fact, if you want to find the genuine ones, they'll be the ones that won't be wanting the money from you. Because they'll be on that spiritual program themselves. And there will be one out there, if you really want it, that will fit itself perfectly to what you are. I know one. Yeah, well, there's one that will suit you. There's one that suits everybody here. But what you have to do... And this, this was the one that got me when I worked in rehabs. 
the reluctance that people would have to pray. I mean, there's a meaning in this word, pray. It's because part of our social program is we have a... I'm going to get a bit shrinking.